bright duty. Every student matters. Let's move to the controversial amendments. What are controversial amendments? Which are full of controversies. That means which could have faced some problems. So in particular, the 38, 39, 42 amendments have been most controversial amendments. These three amendments were made in the background of internal emergency declared in the country from June 75. They sought to make basic changes in many crucial parts of the constitution. The 42nd amendment was particularly seen as wide-ranging amendment affecting large parts of the constitution. It was also an attempt to override the ruling of Supreme Court given in the Keshwananda case, given the duration of the Lok Sabha was extended from 5 to 6 years. And the 42nd amendment also put restrictions on the review powers of the judiciary and this amendment made changes to preamble to the 7th schedule of the constitution and to 53rd article of the constitution. Now let's have a case study so that we can understand it very easily that basic structure and evolution of the constitution, how does it work? In 1973, Keshwananda ruling contributed to the maintain of the basic structure of the constitution. This ruling has contributed to the evolution of the constitution in the following ways. It has set specific limits to the parliament's power to amend the constitution. It says that no amendment can violate the basic structure of the constitution. It allows the parliament to amend any and all parts of the constitution and it places the judiciary as the final authority in deciding an uh, amendment violates basic structure and what constitutes a basic structure. There is no mention of this theory in the constitution. It has emerged from judicial interpretation. The judiciary and its interpretation have practically amended the constitution without a formal amendment. The judiciary has contributed to an informal amendment by interpreting various provisions concerning right to education, right to life, liberty and the right to form and manage minority in educational institutions. Now what is 42nd amendment? Our Indian constitution is unique for its content and spirit because it is the largest constitution. It is very flexible, partially flexible and partially rigid also and its content and spirit is very unique. The constitution of India decides the rule of the land and is taken as the supreme law of the land. The constituent assembly that was behind formulating our constitution has also given scope for the amendments in it with time. Hence, the Indian constitution of what it is today has undergone substantive changes in an account of several amendments which we are reading in this chapter. And the act also called the Constitution Act 1976 which is termed as one of the most controversial acts in the history of amendments to the Indian constitution. It amended or introduced various provisions, attempted to reduce the power of Supreme Court and the High Court and laid down the fundamental duties of the citizens term socialist secular integrated added by the preamble. Now how is 44th amendment act related to the 42nd amendment act? 44th amendment act was introduced in the year 1978 by the government and the act was brought to nullify the amendments made by the 42nd amendment act. 1976 and it reversed the provision made by the 42nd amendment act that allowed the government to amend the constitution on its wish by article 368 44th amendment actified nullified this unjustified power to the government and third point is 44th amendment act removed right to property which was very important from the list of the fundamental rights and made it a legal right Previously, the grounds of the declaration of national emergency were external aggression and international disturbances, but the 44th Amendment replaced the word internal dis disturbances with the word armed rebellion. Right? Then, Article 226 was amended to restore to the high courts and their power to issue writs for any other purpose besides the enforcement of fundamental rights. Now, uh, let's move forward in this amendment act. 44th amendment act modified the constitutional emergency. This is also a provision and it prevented them from being misused in the future. Like there were certain chances of using, uh, misusing these uh, emergency provisions. So, it modified so that it can be prevented. 
and it restored the supreme court and high court jurisdiction and power which they enjoyed before the 42nd amendment act was passed it restored the secular and democratic ideals between the present constitution and the 44th amendment act of 1978 added one more directive principle which requires the state to minimize the inequalities in income status facilities and opportunities that is article number 38 and the 42nd and 44th amendment acts of 1976 and 78 respectively have made the ministerial advice binding on the president and the 44th amendment act of 1978 introduced a new provision to put a restraint on the power of parliament to extend a proclamation of president's rule beyond one year thus it provided that beyond one year the president's rule can be extended by six months at a time only when the following conditions are fulfilled the 43rd amendment repealed six articles 31d 32a 131a 144a 226 and 228a that has been inserted in the constitution by the 42nd amendment article 131a bad high courts making judgments on the constitutional validity of central legislation give exclusive jurisdiction for such laws to the supreme court and here comes one more important amendment act that is your 99th act the national judicial appointments commission bill 2014 very important it introduced in the lok sabha on august 11 2014 by the minister of law and justice mr ravi shankar prasad so what you could learn here is the date who and the bill had been introduced in conjunction with the constitutional 121st amendment bill 2014 which establishes the national judicial appointment commission that is njac the bill provides for the procedure to be followed by njac for recommending the persons for appointment of chief justice of india and other judges of the supreme court right and chief justice and other judges of high court. now officially known as the constitution 101st amendment act 2016 this amendment introduced a national goods and service tax which is called gst i suppose all of you are aware of gst now and in india from 1st july 2017 and it replaced all indirect taxes levied on goods and services by the indian central and the state governments now what are the effects of these constitutional democracies it is the constitution in a democracy that establishes a system based on the rule of law which identifies the government will function as per set norms rules and not according to which and fences of a ruler and the constitution limits the power by the government by guaranteeing of certain fundamental rights to people which the government cannot infringe upon a violate and the constitution guarantees a uh, certain basic fundamental rights to its citizens which protects citizens from arbitrary exercises of powers the constitution also prevents tyranny of the majority by recognizing the rights of the minorities and the constitution also clearly demarcates power of the various organs and the government and defines their jurisdiction and this is how a constitution brings about democracy now once again the exercise why the 42nd amendment remain controversial it remain controversial due to the following reasons it was enacted when the internal emergency was in force when it was passed most of the top political leaders of all political parties were in jail by this amendment the constitution was subverted and what was the decision of keshav nanda bharti case 1973 in the keshav nanda bharti case 1973 supreme court ruled by the parliament can amend any part of the constitution including fundamental rights but cannot change the basic structure of the constitution what was the aim of the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments when narsimha rao government assumed office in uh, 1991 it brought the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment right for which necessary political consensus was created and the purpose of the amendment was to restructure the local government by giving adequate representation to women and other weaker sections of the society and to make the local bodies more vibrant and functional now what do you know about the constitutional review commission for a long time the need is being felt to switch over the parliamentary system 
to the presidential system and to review the entire constitution when the nda government assumed office under the leadership of shri atal bihari vajpayee in 99 it set up a national constitution review constitution commission in 2000 and former chief justice venkata chilla was made the chairman of the commission now let's talk about constitutional values and preamble of the constitution what are the things which are been included here and what does they mean the vanity you may have read the preamble it declares india a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic being sovereign means having complete political freedom and being the supreme authority it implies that india is internally all powerful and externally free it is free to determine for itself without any external interference either by any country or individual nobody is there within to challenge its authority and this feature of sovereignty gives us dignity of existence as a nation to the international community the next one is your socialism you may be aware that social and economic inequalities have been inherited to india traditional society and which is why socialism has made a constitutional value aimed at promoting social change and transformation to all the forms of inequalities our constitution directs the government and the people to ensure planned and coordinated social development in all the fields now secularism we all are pleased with anyone says that india is home to almost all major religions in the world and for your knowledge i would tell you that all religions are equally treated in india no special status is given to any of the religions so in the context of this plurality means more than one or two or many secularism is seen as great constitutional value secularism implies that our country is not guided by any one religion or any religious consideration because we have so many religions but no special status is given to any of these and democracy you all know that we all are free to choose our own government in our own way with our own choice the preamble reflects democracy as a value as a form of government it derives its authority from the will of the people will of the people means the desire what do we want so the people elect the rulers of the country and the elected representatives and remain accountable to the people accountable to the people means they are answerable to us in case we want to question them we could we have uh, interference in the political affairs then uh, the people of india uh, elect them to be part of government different levels by system like universal adult franchise popularly known as one man one vote and the person who is 18 years or above is allowed to vote then republic as we have our own constitution so india is not only a democratic nation but it is also a republic the most important symbol of being a republic is the office of the head of the state that is a president who is elected and who is not selected on the basis of heredity and is found in a system with a monarchy this value strengthens and sustains democracy where every citizen of india is equally eligible to be elected as the head of the state political equality is a chief message of the provision now justice at times you may realize that living in democratic system alone does not ensure justice to citizens in all its totality even now we find a number of cases where not only the social and economic justice but also the political justice is denied which is why the constitution makers have included social economic and political justice as constitutional values next is your liberty the preamble prescribes liberty of thought expression belief faith worship as one of the core values they have to be assured to every member of all the communities it has been done so because the ideals of democracy cannot be attained without the presence of certain minimal rights and which are essential for a free and civilized existence of individuals equality it is a significant constitutional value as any other the constitution ensures equality of status and opportunity that means all citizens of the country are equally treated they all have the opportunity for the work and employment and education and uh, for the development of the country they could have the best in him or her so fraternity there is a, also a commitment made in the preamble to promote the value of fraternity and stands for the spirit of common brotherhood among all the people of india in the absence of fraternity a plural society like india stands divided but we all are united then dignity of the individual promotion of fraternity is essential to realize the dignity of the individual individual here it is counted this is citizen it is essential to secure the dignity of every individual without which democracy cannot function it ensures equal participation of every individual in all the process of democracy governance 
the unity and the integrity of the nation as we have seen fraternity also promotes one of the critical values that is unity and integrity of the nation to maintain the independence of country intact the unity and integrity of nation is very essential and the international peace and just international order the value of international peace and a just international order though not included in the preamble is reflected in other provisions of the constitution the constitution directs the state promote international peace and security maintain just and honorable relations between the nations foster respect for the security maintain just and honorable international law treaty obligation and pre settlement of international disputes by arbitration to uphold the observe these values in the interest of india the peace and just international order will definitely contribute to the development of india and the fundamental duties our constitution prescribes some fundamental duties also to be performed by the citizens as we have got the fundamental rights so on the parallel side we have few duties also it is true that these duties are not enforceable in the court of law like the fundamental rights are but these duties are to be performed by the citizens now let's move to the democratic character of indian state that means what kind of features do we have in this uh, constitution integrated judicial system and like the judicial system let's read about the judiciary of the country like the federal countries like the united states of america the indian constitution has established an integrated judicial system although the supreme court uh, uh, is at the national level and high courts at the state level and subordinate courts at the district and lower level there is a single hierarchy of the courts at the top of the hierarchy is the supreme court that means all courts will follow its rules and regulations and this unified judicial system is aimed at the promoting and ensuring justice to all the citizens in uniform manner so moreover constitutional provisions ensure the independence of indian judiciary which is free for the in influence of the executive and the legislative now next is your universal adult franchise the values of equality and justice are reflected in yet another salient features of the constitution every indian after attaining certain age at present 18 years has right to vote no discrimination can be made on the basis of religion race caste sex descent and place of birth or residence this right is known as universal adult franchise then the federal system and parliamentary form of government another salient feature of the indian constitution is that it provides a federal system of a state and the parliamentary form of government that means powers are divided on horizontal and vertical form this you have done in your junior classes as well like here it is central government then the state government and here the local government here the legislature then the executive and the judiciary so these are the powers are been divided under federalism and a uh, system reflects the constitutional value of unity and integrity and the nation and more importantly the value decentralization of power the parliamentary form of government reflects the values of responsibility and sovereignty vested in the people the core principle of parliamentary government is the responsibility of the executive to the legislature consisting of the representatives of the people now what is a constitutional body those bodies whose formation is prescribed by the indian constitution itself are known as constitutional body uh, if i talk about indian constitutional authorities of india are attorney general of india controller and auditor general election commission public service commission so these are the uh, constitutional authorities which work independent now the attorney general of india Article seventy-six of Constitution provides for Attorney General of India. He is considered the highest law officer in the country. He is appointed by the President and holds office during the pleasure. And person who is qualified and to be appointed as a Judge of the Supreme Court are eligible for the office of Attorney General of India. And he has few duties as well, beta, to advise the government on the legal matters, right, and refer to him as by the President to appear on the behalf of the GOI. in supreme court in all the cases concerning the government to represent you in the reference made by the resident president of the supreme court under article 143 to appear in the high court in the cases concerning gui when required now the controller and auditor general of india article 148 of the constitution provides a independent office controller and auditor general of india and cag is considered as a guardian of the public purse 
and along with the supreme court the election commission and the upsc that is union public service commission and the office of cag is treated as one of the bulwarks of the democratic system now who appoints uh, president of india appoints cag by a warrant under his hand and seal he holds the office for the period of 6 years up to the age of 65 years with which ever is earlier and the uh, second thing is this it can, he can be removed from his office in the same manner as a judge of the supreme court independent and gag is provided with a security of tenure his rights cannot be altered to his disadvantage after his appointment and all the expenses of the office of gag are charged by the consolidated fund of india and his salary is equal to that of a judge to the supreme court what are his duties the duties and powers of cag are mentioned in article 149 of the constitution all the accounts related to the expenses from the consolidated firm of india and consolidated fund of states and united union territories are audited by cag and also expenditure of the contingency fund and public account of india and states are audited by cag and the net proceeds of any tax or duty are ascertained and certified by cag cag acts as a guide friend and philosopher of the public accounts of committee and all the receipts and expenditure of bodies finance and the central or state revenue are also audited by cag now uh, if i talk about three reports which are submitted by cag to the president are adult report on appropriation accounts audit report on finance accounts and audit report on public undertakings the election commission it is also an independent body and it is a permanent one and uh, formation of election commission is prescribed by article 324 of the constitution it is common to both central and state governments the election of uh, parliament state legislature the office of president and vice president are looked by the election commission and what is the composition of election commission you have done it in class 10 as well it consists of a chief election commissioner and other election commissioners president fixes the number of election commissioners the appointment of the chief election commissioner as well as the other election commissioners is made by the president at present election commission consists of a chief election commissioner and two election commissioners the term of the office of election commissioner is a 6 year or until they attain the age of 65 year which is uh, whichever is earlier what are the powers the powers of election commission can be divided in three categories administrative advisory and quasi judicial security of tenure is provided by the chief election commissioner he can be removed from the office in the same manner as a judge of the supreme court other election commissioners cannot be removed from the office except on the recommended of cec and public service commission this is also an independent uh, body the public service commission is the commission to which personal matters for all officers excluding policy judicial and legal uh, officers are referred the functions of the public service commission are found in article 107 of the constitution let's talk about the india is the largest democracy of the world and let's see how it is successful in the terms of governance good governance refers to the task of running of government in an effective manner and good governance is not a phenomenon which can be described in words it is rather a phenomenon which can be felt by people and the features of good governance un economic and social commission for asia and pacific 2008 is to 1 define governance as process of decision making and process by which decisions are implemented are not implemented and according to unesapcp good governance has following characteristics participation strategic vision rule of law transparency responsiveness consensus orientation equity building effectiveness efficiency accountability as no society has all its characteristics each society should define characteristics most important to them now india plays a unique role as well how it plays a unique role in facilitating democratic governance in other developing countries by making the most of its experiences with constitutional democracy moreover it has explored the, uh, the possibility of assistance for constitutional drafting and which is one of the least explored issues in the literature on the promotion of democracy and good governance law and development and development aid then the experience the implicating uh, implementations of these findings are that the unique experiences norms and institutions of developing countries can be more attractive than these provided by advanced countries and as they are born out of developing countries and are continuously tested in relation to the ongoing challenges that may developing countries commonly face the significant events 
the green revolution to increase food grains the white revolution made india one of the largest producers of milk and these changes were done after the independence to keep on moving towards the development and development projects like construction of dams steel plants and oil refineries creating institutes of management and technology medical sciences defense equipments which collectively shaped india to march on the path of progress and we all are witnessing all these things now few challenges are also there in the indian democracy that means few are uh, hurdles are also faced by indian democracy like first one is your communism and religious fundamentalism the indian democracy faces serious challenge also as a casteism communism and religious fundamentalism they weaken the function the stability of democratic system because still uh, people are there those who uh, like have conflicts on the basis of caste or communities or religion so we should not waste our time on all these things then the regionalism or we could say regional disparities in indian democracy has also been struggling with regionalism which is primarily an outcome of regional disparities and imbalance in development we all know that india is a plural country that means we have many states with diverse religions and languages and communities and tribes and cultures a number of culture and linguistic groups are concentrated in certain territorial segments although development process in the country aims at growth and development of all regions the regional disparities and imbalances in terms of differences in per capita income literacy rates states of health and educational infrastructure and services population and levels of industrial and agricultural development continue to exist third challenge is criminal uh, criminalization of politics in recent years criminalization of politics in india has become a debatable issue there have been allegations that are some elements in politics who do not have faith in democratic values and practices they involve in violence and undertake refuge in other unhealthy undemocratic methods to win elections and undoubtedly this is not a healthy trend in politics and there is an urgent need to apply serious check on such tendencies okay let's move to the exercise and uh, uh, why our constitution has been called living document there are four options uh, it can be easily changed it is flexible as well as rigid it is very rigid or our constitution is dread document and the answer is b it is flexible as well as rigid which is not the method of amendment in our constitution it is answer number a 3/4 majority and how are fundamental rights amended so these fundamental rights are amended by special majority plus ratification by half of the states and how are federal issues amended it is special majority ratification by half of the states now how are ordinary laws amended and the answer number is c that is by simple majority which articles amends the constitution article 368 how can areas of state be altered that is simply majority and how can new states be formed that is simple majority uh the questions from exercise uh, continues like how far the constitution should be flexible and rigid the constitution provides a framework of the government which is most suitable and responsive for the present and future society the constitution has to be uh, respond the challenges that may arise in the future and therefore it must be the quality and the characteristic of the constitution that it has been something that is contemporary and something that has a more durable importance or uh, suiting to the needs of the future it should not show some rigidity and plaything in the hands of the ruling party and it is not misused at any stage now we are moving towards the end of the chapter with the question point out the main subjects included in the basic structure of the indian constitution basic structure of the indian constitution these are the important subjects included by the indian constitution supremacy of the constitution federal system secularism democratic republic nature rule of law judicial review fundamental rights social economic justice parliamentary government independent judiciary and the supreme court made verdict that the parliament has no authority to change the basic structure of the constitution 